Okay, so this is just sort of a quick overview on what a substation is and what a substation does. So here's a pretty basic substation that goes from transmission to uh, sub-transmission levels. So electricity, the higher the voltage, the easier it travels. The resistance of the electricity is much less, like multiple times less. It's not a linear relationship, it's a uh, logarithmic relationship. So the higher the voltage, the easier it travels over the lines without power loss, much, much less resistance. So these high voltage lines bring the power from a further distance and then they come to one of these switch yards that you see here and they can pick whichever line they want to come into the substation and then that line feeds into the substation through this switch and into the transformer. This switch here has insulated an insulating gas inside these bottles which is how the arc is broken if they need to take this transformer out of service. You can't just open a switch, you have to break the arc with something. And these particular bottles are filled with SF6 sulfur hexafluoride, which is an insulating gas. It's uh, inert and dense, and it easily breaks the current compared to trying to open it with a switch. Watch a couple of videos on switches opening under a load. It's, it's pretty impressive, but very dangerous. Nothing you want to be around. So. The power comes in through this transformer and you see these very large bushings on what's called the high side of the transformer. That's 345,000 volts. And then on the low side of the bushing, you see the transformer, you see these smaller bushings. It comes out onto this bus at 34,500 volts. And the way it does it is there's coils inside this transformer that transfer the power through induction and a ratio which causes the voltage to drop and the current to go up. So if you know 100 amps goes in the high side at 345,000 volts on the low side you have 34,500 volts capable of 1,000 amps with that same amount of power. These are filled with an insulating oil so that there's not an arc inside the transformer. This thing on top of it is called a conservator and that allows the fluid to expand and contract while the rest of this can remain totally in oil. And then the oil is circulated through these radiators and cooled with fans in order to cool. It's on the low side and then the power goes out to what we call a bus. And there's one, two, three, four, five circuit breakers here where the power can be sent out to different areas, but the bus is energized from the transformer so that any one of these can open and close and they'll still have power on the line side, which is what's feeding out to the different circuits that these go to, kind of like a circuit breaker in your house. I have another video with a little more detail on these circuit breakers and what they do. These particular circuit breakers and how they operate as compared to other circuit breakers, but short story is they protect against short circuits.